What's up, coaches? Coach Career from General Gridiron. Today's episode is going to be sponsored by All Out Apparel, my man Gene Levine. Hit up All Out for any kind of athletic apparel you want. Coaches attire, uniforms, hats, he does it all. Embroidery, screen print, whatever you need. So check out my man Gene Levine at All Out Apparel. Today's episode is going to be the differences between eight-man front defenses and pro-style defenses. Well, I'm going to show you the odd version of it and then the even version of it. And just to give you some thoughts. Now, I'm not saying my way is right or wrong, but this is just the way I view it. And the difference is how I play them when I have played them at points in my career. So we're going to start here with the 3-5-3 or 5-3, whatever you want to call it. You see we're going to get eight men to start with in the box compared to seven men in the box here with two high safety. Here's the one high structure. So in the 3-5-3 or 5-3, you, you're not going to get as much speed on the field as you will in that scenario over there with the 3-4. The outside linebacker here, the way I play it, I would like these two outside linebackers only to have to cover the fats. I never I never want them covered number, number two vertically. We're going to play mostly cover one or cover three. One of the stack backers in this, in my situation, needs to be versatile, a hybrid type player. Usually I would call this guy, I would identify him as the Jack Backer. He's the guy that would detach if necessary. Or we drop him back to safety, or we'll have him cover number two in space. Front movements is key here. You also, in either situation, can two-gap. So what I mean by front movement is if we're going to get, let's say we want to bring the outside linebacker from the left side here. We would tag his name. Uh, let's say we're just gonna bring the back. So back closed, because we call it closed because it's tight in here and this is open. Back closed one. That will signify the front that they have to move a gap away, okay? Gap away and we're gonna bring the pressure here and the coverage, whether it's one or three, everybody will tie into what they do from that point. This video is not about that. This is just about the differences between an eight-man front defense, in my opinion, and a pro-style defense. So, in this arrangement here, how I would play it, these guys will only cover the flats in coverage. One of these guys will be versatile to detach. We will more than likely or not only play cover one or cover three, depending on the situation. Now, if we per game plan and we know we're playing teams that present other problems, there's things that we could do to make a sound within this structure. Here in the three, four, we can get, in my opinion, once again, we can get more speed on the field. The outside linebackers have to be able to play the flat and the verticals. We got more coverage, more coverage situations that we can tag to this situation. You have to have more athletes on the field. That's an absolute because we're asking this guy, this guy, and this guy to be pretty versatile plus these two safeties. The front movement is key as well. And in either situation, I forgot to mention here, we can play two gap, but that's a conversation for another day. Today, we're just gonna talk about the movements and how this defense differs from this defense. Not which one is better, just how they are different. So here, our Sam and the Will have to be able to play the flats, but they also have to be able to play the hooks if necessary depend on the call. The buck backer is gonna be the, not the better, the, the more athletic of the two, because with, in today's game with trips and doubles and all types of things, he may have to detach and we always want this guy, the Mike, this is why I call him the Mike, he's always gonna play the back door. Meaning if the ball's going away, we want him playing A, A to B type deal. Playing the black door, chasing things from the backside, making things happen from the backside. This guy gotta be a bigger, more physical player and more versatile. Okay, so the main difference is here. The Sam and the Will here have to be able to play the flats. They also have to be able to play the hook to curl area. The buck needs to be detached. The strong safety needs to be a versatile player as well because if we're getting a hard run team and we have to move them up, we could get to an eight man defense by bringing the safety up, playing them outside of the Sam, depending on where the threats are. We could bring him up, play him closer to the line of scrimmage, where we give him an easy read of number two. If he blocks down, you come up and support right now, period. So that's how you get to the eight man, by how you play him. Now, we could spin these safeties, or if they wanted to motion us and bring the strength the other way, he could play it that way as well. 
But this guy's usually not more physical. So me, how we do it per game plan for the week, we will always flip the strong safety to the strength. Now, again, the odd front is based on movement. When you're playing odd defense, the way I would play it is we want to play it based on slanting and angling. That's the correct term for it, slanting and angling. I wouldn't play two gapping as much because we got speed on the field and let's use that to our advantage. We're just not going to hunker down and hammer and tong with you and try to play, you know, uh, show whose nutsack is bigger. No, we want to use what's given to us. And in the eye structures, what you have to your advantage is the ability to move, is, is to get movement from your front. So if we wanted to bring, let's say the will now from the weak side, we want to bring the will. That is the cue for the front to move a gap away, a gap away, and then everybody gets their coverage or run fit according based on the call. That's, you know, that's sort of like how we play offense. Our structure defenses are very much rule based. That is mainly the difference between our structures and even structures in my opinion. Odd structures are more scheme oriented because we have to get to these calls. Let's say we want to get to a four man stunt. We got to say, well, three, well, three is going to tell the well he's coming. They're moving away and everybody will get their coverage according. Okay. So in will three situation, will's coming. We got free safety to go to the middle of the field. We got to hook the curl player. I mean, we got to. Curl to flat player, a hold to curl player, a hook to curl player, and a and a curl to flat player in the strong safety. So that would draw up something like this. So you guys get the picture. Will's coming. He's gonna move. He will stem stem away. Okay. We got the hold to hook player. We got a curl to flat player who's got extended to flat. We'll have a corner dropping. I didn't put the corners up because there's not enough space, and this is not so much about that. He's gonna spin in the middle of the field. He'll drop, play the hook, the hook to um, hook to flat. Sam's gonna drop and play the hook to curl area here. So we got four under, three deep, four man pressure. If we brought the four man pressure this way, It'll be more like that, more like that. And there's your three deep, okay? So just simply, that's a four man pressures out of our structure, playing cover three in both situations, just to give you an idea. If you play cover one, you just match them up, who's got who man to man, and go from there. We teach, in the coach career way of doing things, we teach cover one, cover three, basically is the same general principle. Like I said, this video is not about that. That's a topic for another day, I will get to it. So that's how you get to the pressures and movements out of a four man pressure from an eight man box or the pro style odd front defense. Now, I just wanted to show you a five man pressure so you get the gist of what, what we're doing. Now just keeps the fronts going the way they will, the way they are going. And actually, we are a little creative. Okay, if we wanted to get a five man situation, cover one or cover three, um, let's go, uh, let's go too strong. Now, because we're gonna bring this pressure from the middle, that's automatically, and this is all built into the structure. That's telling the two head up, four technique tackles that they are gonna play C gap because we're gonna bring five, we're gonna bring two inside here to the strength. Now, in that situation, if it's cover one, and there's two backs in the backfield, they're responsible for anything coming out into the flat. So they got flats if it's cover one, okay? If, we play cover three, and I don't like doing it, but you may have to in this situation. Here is your skiff players. They'd have to drop, and he'd come to the hole. So there's your three under, three deep scenario, okay? They're going to hold the hook 
We don't want him carrying it for too long, nigga, to hold the hook and rally to the flat in a five-man situation in an eight-man front our defense. In the pro-style defense, if we want to bring five, we're gonna let's just say we're gonna go with I call stab. He's gonna come. Stab means we're gonna get a long stick here. He's gonna move away. He's gonna move away, and we're gonna punch the B guy with the the buck. Sam's got to drop the play, the hook, the curl. Of his, he's gonna skiff, seam curl flat. We call that. We got a whole player. We got a seam curl flat player here. So you got three deep. Let's just say the corners over here. Free safety spins. Corner here. So that's how you get to a five-man pressure in the eye. Once again, it's very scheme related and call related. It takes um, takes some time to understand. Everybody has to be on the same page. Communication has to be at an all-time high. So that's the difference between an eight-man odd structure defense versus a pro-style odd structure defense. Until the next time, Coach Career, General Gridiron.